All right, the last section of chapter two is 2.4, circle graphs. And a circle graph is a great way to show data because it cuts it up into sectors and you can easily see which one is more, which one is less. Um, the only issue with circle graphs, not the issue, but usually how they're represented is in terms of percents. So for instance, for example, one, we have the following circle graph shows the number of people in Maxine's, how the number of people in Maxine's office building get to work. So there are 350 people working in the building, and this is important. Because it's given in percents, the amount of people that do each thing, or the amount of people the way they get to work, is going to be the percentage times by the number of people. So for instance, part A, which says what percentage of people walk to work, so walk is here, which is represented by the black area here, which is 3%. So I know that's 3%. How many people does this represent? So what we have to do is convert it to a decimal, 0 0.03, multiply it by the total number of people, which is 350, to get my answer of 10.5. So I would say that between 10 and 11 people, because you can't really have 10 per uh, 10 people or 10.5 people. The next question: What percentage of people come to work in a car? So I look down the list, and every time you make a circle graph, it should always, always have a legend. Otherwise, it's impossible to tell, and you're going to have to get creative with what patterns or colors you use. So a car is the largest section here. It's 61%, converted to a decimal is 0 0.61, times my 350 because it wants to know how many people that is. So I have 350 times by 0 0.61, which is 213.5, which means between 213 and 214 people. Again, you can't have 0.5 of a person, but it's just approximately, right? So the next part, C, consider those who carpool, walk, or bike. Carpool, walk, or bike. So that's carpool, here, walk, which we already looked at, and bike is here. So carpool is here, walk is the black area here, and bike is the checkered area here. So it's those three sections. Is this more or less than the number of people who take, take public transit? Well, public transit is this, the lined area, which is over here. Notice public transit is 22%. So what we have to do is we have to look at all these percents added up. So I have nine plus five plus three. So nine plus five is 14 plus three is 17%. So we know that it's less, and it's less by, I would take my 22 minus my 17, which is 17, three, two is five percent less. So the number of people that walk, carpool, or bike is still 5% less than the number of people that take public transit. So that's good, that means a, a large percentage of people are taking public transit, but there's still a large percentage of people that take their cars to work, which means that there are individual cars going to work. But it's kind of hard to take public transit sometimes to work. So that's the first example going through. And you could figure out how many people less by taking 5% and multiplying it by 350. That would give the amount of people, which I think they might actually do. Yes, um, they probably do in your, in your workbook. Next example I want to look at is question one on build your skills. This is on page 111. So the circle graph below shows the results of a student survey of 171 students and they were asked their favorite color. I know my son asks, <laughs> he likes to ask people their favorite color all the time. So this is a good, good question for kids for sure. Um, and here we have all the data. So the first question here, A, how many students chose green I'll use green for green. How many students chose green, which is this color here, as their favorite color? So we have 14%, which is 0 0.14. There were 171 students asked. So 171 times 0.14 is equal to 23.94. 
I would round that up to 24 students. You cannot have 0.94. So 20, approximately 24 students chose green as their favorite color. Part B, what is the most popular color? And then it says approximately how many students. So if I look on the graph here, I'm looking for percentages. Which percentage is the largest? Right, this one up here, 25, what does it represent? It represents blue, 25%. So I have 25% as a decimal is 0.25 times by my number of students, which is 171, times by my 0.25 uh, as a decimal, 42.75. And again, I would say, and this little squiggle means approximately 40, whoops, 43 students chose blue as their favorite color. Large percentage like blue. The circle graph below, and that's for part, that's the, the end for the example where you're looking at uh, pictures for people's colors. The circle graph below indicates the percentage of his income that Frank spends on different items. So I'm just going to look at one question here. On what two items does he spend the same amount? And you can see right away from the graph, the circle graph, that you just look at the percents and it's these two items here. Now, why is it important to have a legend for your graph because otherwise I would have no idea. So I know that this one here represents savings and this one here, the darker kind of gray color, represents entertainment. So it would be savings and entertainment. So just be really clear when you're making circle graphs, when you watch the second video on making circle graphs, you'll see that I use a legend um, and be really, really clear when you're typing out your legend um, what each one represents.